elaborate plot that involves strapping what they said was a bomb to a bank teller who then walked into the vault and got the money for them. Matt Gutman is in Coral Gables, Florida this morning. Matt, good morning. Good morning, Dan. While police are still searching for those three men, the FBI spent eight hours questioning the victim in this incident. And while they released him late last night and say he is still a victim, there are some questions this morning about whether or not he was involved in this plot or was just a pawn in one of the riskiest bank heists in memory. What police say began as a home invasion early Friday soon became a hostage situation, a bank robbery, and an attempted bombing, ending with the alleged robbers getting away and the apparent victim being led away shirtless and in handcuffs. Police say three masked men allegedly burst into 25-year-old Diego Uscamina's Miami area home just after midnight, holding him and his father at gunpoint for more than seven hours. Around 8 a.m., two of the men allegedly forced Uscamida, a Bank of America teller, into his red Mustang, ordering him to drive to his bank, then rigging him with what the FBI says appeared to be an explosive device. And they said, we have a remote device, you know, uh, triggering device, you know, we want you to, to get as much money that you possibly can and bring it out to us. A branch manager helped Uscamida gather the cash. He then took it to the parking lot where the gunmen were waiting. The robbers never had to step foot inside the bank. After the gunman drove off, the bank manager called 911. SWAT teams, the bomb squad, and the FBI swarmed in, closing down area roads and schools and sparking rumors of a hostage standoff. They said there's a, they're taking hostages in the Bank of America right next to my apartment. It took the bomb squad three hours to help Uskamina cut himself free of his shirt and the device, which they then detonated. They definitely screamed, fire in the hole, fire in the hole, and went down the line, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. Uskamina was led away in handcuffs, police said as a precaution. It is an unusual event uh, to have explosives strapped uh, to a victim and sent in. But not unprecedented. In 2003, a man robbed a bank with a time bomb fastened to his neck. He said he was coerced into it. Investigators later learned he had helped plan the heist. And while that bomb detonated killing the victim, in this case, Uskamida was unhurt. And while the FBI still says he is a victim, there are some reports this morning that that bomb was a fake and that Uskamida was acting suspiciously calm throughout the crisis. Dan. Matt, thank you. I want to pick up on that last point you made. Joining us now from Boston is the Harvard Fellow and former Miami Police Chief John Timoney. He's a veteran police officer who's also been the commissioner of the Philadelphia Police Force and the chief of department here with the NYPD. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good to see you. Likewise. So let me let me ask you first. I, I want to make clear that this gentleman is still at this point considered by police officially to be a victim, but you are skeptical. Well, no. I mean, he, he, right now he is a victim. They're treating him uh, that he is, in fact, a victim. However, uh, the detectives, you know, they've got limited information at this point, and they've got to leave all options uh, open. You know, you referenced the case back in, in Pennsylvania in 2003 where a guy was strapped with a bomb to his neck that later detonated, and it turned out he was complicit with, with two of the cohorts in that, in that bank robbery. And so uh, this case here is, is quite unusual. It's not unprecedented. And again, in cases like this, the detectives really have to leave all options open. Really, uh, everybody is a suspect until they can uh, account for themselves. So, uh, and, uh, I'm ahead. sorry, but Uska Mehta was questioned overnight and then released. So how now right. do police go about figuring out whether he's in fact culpable? Well, they'll do a variety of things. But they've, they've obviously logged in his statements and they will work from there. They're also out there looking for his car. The, the, the three guys got away in his in the tailor's uh, automobile. They'll try and find that. And, and I guarantee you, they will quickly, along with the FBI, quickly uh, piece this together and find out where, where the truth lies. But right now, I think you still have to treat this, this gentleman as a victim. However, you leave all options open. You close down uh, no avenues. And, and let's see where the facts take them. Generally speaking, are bank robbers caught, or do people get away with crimes like this frequently? No, the, the vast majority, when they get to be this complex, they usually they usually fall under their own weight. And this is clearly a complex case. Uh, and, and clearly there are at least uh, two victims, the teller himself, the father, uh, lots of interviews, and then, then stories either mesh or they don't mesh. John Timoney, we really appreciate you getting up early and giving us this perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much.